means that then you're going to have life. These are the very things that talk about me. You don't want to come to me that you may have life. And the Lord began to resound that to me. But in your case, it all depends, brother, on who, who you're going to get. You know, if you get someone that's just going through the motions, you may be able to plant a seed. Seed planting is very important with them. Uh, but the other thing is what I hated. I'm going to tell you what I hated. I hated when people talked about the organization. That organization. Did you know about the false prophecies that were uttered? Did you know that the history of the organization has this? Do you know about the doctrinal flip-flops that go back and forth? Are you aware of those things? Because once you undermine that in them, that's where you're going to get the thought. Because they're held down in bondage to an organization. They forgot about Christ. They say they worship Christ, but they don't. Don't. They worship the Watchtower. The Watchtower is their mother organization in which all spiritual food goes out to the household of faith. And if you can't, see, you can't get them to listen because they're going to believe what the mother says, the mother organization. Because that's just what they're trained to believe. That the Lord left a faithful and discreet slave, a group of men on earth, to feed the household of faith. So you would have to undermine what they uh, go into the organization. Are you aware that uh, this and such and such happened in 1925? Are you aware of the false prophecies? You know, those type of things. Are you aware that they changed that Bible over, you know, four to five hundred times? You know, the wording in the in the, in the in their New World's translation? So that's what I think would be the best job, because I hated that. I hated being called a false prophet. But you don't have to call them that. You can kind of... You know, the organization is teaching you wrong. <laughs>
uh, governing body, and they were like they flip flopped all around it. I don't think they answered it directly. So, mm -hmm. so um, just on the one hundred and twenty-four thousand, when I was a freshman in high school, I went to school with a civil witness, um, and he was extremely dogmatic about his faith. And I remember one time we were sitting in the economics class, and we were talking about religion, believe it or not, and um, he said it was great excitement. I saw one of the chosen ones, and I said. <laughs> You did? And he said, yeah. And I actually saw two because I'm willing to. Um, but I just, to me, it, it was my first introduction to the Jehovah Witness belief. And it, it was dumbfounding to me that they would believe that, that there's a number capped on this, like that God would only love or want that amount of people when there's how many people in this world. It's just, it was a revelation for me. And I you know, try to explain to him, does it ever bother you that you're not? Oh, no. Person was like a heavenly angel, and I'm like, but you're not, and That's you're exactly fine right. with that. And <laughs> it was, and I think what you said, basically poking holes in what they believe is their truth, is and making them question what they believe, and making them want to search for more, as you did, is the only way to get them to, to find truth. Because exactly. otherwise, they are. It's 144. I just it was. Um, it bothered me because. And they have the memorial where you take a Christ, you know, you partake of the bread and the wine. Well, they would just pass the plate, but no one in the in the congregation would partake because no one. <laughs> they just pass the plate in case in case an anointed showed up. <laughs> so the plate would go, and okay, no one no one partook. Or maybe I, I knew one in, the, in one of my sister congregations that would partake, and uh, I was like, wow, you know. So it was a big deal. Wow. Right. Fine. I wanted to partake of the wine. That's really destroyed. I, I wanted to partake of the bread. I thought it was a competition. I had no clue. I thought it was like, if you get first place, you were given one yeah. one to so one 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 one. So they believe that 144, they're, they're, they have a specific purpose to be kings and priests. And that's it. That's the, their job. And the calling has been closed, so there's no chance for any of anybody else to sell this. Well, you see, even that, they'll, they'll slide around that. They really believe it's closed, but they won't tell you that. They'll, as it was told to me, when I disputed at my Bible study, you know, they're really old today. You know, are you anointed? <laughs> you know, like, oh. <laughs> you know, that's how you feel. You know, it's just... Do you at least know how they found out, like the anointed ones? How did they find out that they were anointed? They find out because they apply the scriptures to them. The spirit, the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. So you can claim to be a man. That's right. Mm -hmm. So what if you were so like one, what if you could claim to be one of the women? That's right. Of Essentially, you're denying it. If you have, if in your heart, you know, it's, it's hard to understand because you can be, you can be a, a slave of God and trapped in that religion. Because that's what Paul said. He said, I don't know why you quickly turn to another gospel. There were those that had all of a sudden, they started in faith, and now they want to be made. They wind up in a religion, and now they're caught in there. Well, but you can claim to be anointed. Most likely, they may not believe. They'll look upon you with doubt, and you'll be. They'll judge you, and you know. So that's, nobody knows who the one is. No, not essentially. Not not. You know, they know the governing body. They know that those that create the laws and write the literature, but it's kind of like yeah, maybe a mental mind game in a way. Anyway, anybody else? Anybody else got a question? I'm just grateful that we're in the truth. That's all I can say. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 You can forget cards at Father's Day, Mother's Day, that's all gone. You know, it's not so much, I mean, the Bible, I think it's clear, it says about, uh, you know, let no man judge you of food or drink, or observance of a festival. So those things were a shadow of the things to come, but the reality belongs to the Christ. So, okay, don't do this, all, all self-imposed religion and a false humility, you know, outwardly, but inwardly, it says all things are lawful, but not all things are advantageous. Or anything that is not of faith is sin. So when I'm saying this is not right for me, I shouldn't do it. If it is, 
it's good, but I can't impose my conscience. But in, in that religion, you're giving your conscience over to a group of men to decide for you right or wrong. That's what's going to happen. That's what will happen. Yeah, so you say, why do really men doubt them and look for more? Like, you know what I'm saying? The why scriptures. Why, 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 why? The, the scriptures in my heart. It's the truth in the Bible. The truth in the Bible the began word. to talk to me. The living word, it says God's words alive and exerts power, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the joints in its marrow, the dividing of the soul and spirit. And that word began to talk to me just the way it said, look, look at what you became and look at what the scriptures said. Where's the spirit of God in you? It says, well, this is what you need to be saved. If you're not born again. How can you say that? Jesus said, John 3.13. You have to be born again. Bro. I just want to elaborate. I don't got a question, but I love you, bro. I never thought I'd see a day with all the old witnesses that I've gotten a chance to try to witness to. And really, I've gone hours and hours going nowhere to see somebody like Jerry here today. Uh, I'm going to tell you what it is that Jerry has. And if you guys haven't seen it already, I think it's pretty obvious. He has a hunger for truth. Bottom line, anybody who comes to the truth has to have a hunger to begin with. And he had a hunger. And it just goes to show you, no matter what denomination, no matter what group, religion you're involved with, if you are hungry for the truth, you can be a Mormon. Reading the Book of Mormon, and God will give you revelation, and he will steer you to the truth. And that's what Jerry had. He had a hunger that didn't quit, and God brought him to where he is because of that hunger. God, I'm telling you, you're a blessing to all of us. Really I was talking to your wife earlier, and she invited me. That's my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I was, at, I was dumping the garbage, and she was dumping the garbage. <laughs> what a coincidence. <laughs> she said to come in and hear her husband say, actually, yeah. I was, your daughter is the one that said, your, your dad, I thought you were talking about coming here to your pastor. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of missed what you were saying. But I want to say this. I have no questions, but I want to say this because it's strong in my heart. If I ever met someone that's chosen, I'm looking at my Amen. Amen. <laughs>
to the, the true revelation. And I wonder if we can just stand and let's pray for Brother Jerry. Is that all right? Amen. 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 Let's pray for our brother right now and God to just use him and his hand be upon him. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful, God, for the miracle that you have done in our brother's life, Lord. God, I pray that you would continue to use him. Lord God, I, I pray that you would anoint him with a message, with a word, put him in contact with people that he could share truth with. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord God, that you would order his steps. God, that he would be a mighty warrior for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, use him for your glory and for your honor, Lord. Hallelujah, that souls would be saved, that lives would be changed for the glory of God, that you'd receive all the glory and all the honor. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.